So in this module, we're going to talk about weak acids as opposed to strong acids. Their KAs and PKAs and what percent ionization is and how to calculate it. We're also going to do a, um, a calculation involving the KA. All right, so as opposed to a strong acid, a weak acid does not completely dissociate when dissolved in water. And that means there is an equilibrium that occurs. So for our generic acid, it's in equilibrium with the proton and its conjugate base. The equilibrium constant expression for that, just like we saw in the equilibrium chapter, looks like this. Uh, this is just called something different, slightly different. It's called Ka instead of K. But really, it's just an equilibrium constant. We can also, uh, we also have what's called a pKa, and it's defined the same way that pH or pOH or anything like that is defined. It's just the negative log base 10 of that value. So in this case, negative log base 10 of the Ka. You can look up, there's all kinds of tables of Ka's or pKa's for acids. For example, this small table right here lists the formula, the name, the Ka, and the pKa. A couple of things to note about this. First of all, the larger the Ka, the stronger the acid. Because if you go back and look at the equilibrium constant expression, a larger value of Ka means the numerator is bigger, the denominator is smaller, which means there's more hydrogen ion or hydronium ion around at equilibrium, meaning it's more dissociated, meaning that it's a stronger acid. Now the, the reverse is true for the pKa. The smaller the pKa, the stronger the acid, just like the lower the pH, the more acidic the solution. And we got, we got, I just threw a few numbers on here. I did this one here, this one, and this one. So once we know the Ka or, or pKa, we can do some calculations. For example, let's say we have a solution of nitrous acid and it's 0.392 molar in nitrous acid. What's the pH of this solution? And the important things to know are this is the equilibrium, uh, excuse me, the equilibrium reaction. And this is the Ka, which I just got from the previous table. By the way, you do not need to memorize any Ka's or anything like that. We will always just look them up. So knowing this, pause for a moment. And see if you can see can solve this problem. Okay. All right, so how'd you do? What we're going to do is we're going to set up an ice table, just like the equilibrium chapter. So initially, we had 0.392 moles per liter of nitrous acid, zero nitrite, the conjugate base, and now I have an approximate sign here. Why do you think that is? Well, because this is in an aqueous solution, that's all of these are going to be, and water auto dissociates. So in pure water, there's 1 times 10 to the minus 7th moles per liter of hydrogen ion. But that's pretty small. And I know looking at what I did is I looked at the size of the Ka. And even though that might look like a pretty small number to you, it's three orders of magnitude larger than Ka. Uh, the K, well, actually, it's 10 orders of magnitude larger than Kw. And so that means that that tells me that there's almost certainly going to be a lot more hydrogen ion due to the nitrous acid than there is to the dissociation of water. So I'm going to try it. Now, I have to check it at the end. This is an assumption. I have to see if it was a good one at the end. So we'll do that. So we set up our ice table. Minus x for nitrous acid, plus x for hydrogen ion and nitrite. So at equilibrium, we have these guys, plugging them into the equilibrium constant expression, just like before. There's our k. We get x squared over 0.392 minus x. And just as before, might as well try to make our lives easier and see if we can neglect x in the denominator here and say it's about x squared over 0.392. And so we can say this if x is a lot smaller than 0.392. And we're going to check that once we get our x this way by the 5% rule. So solving for x and neglecting x compared to 0 0.392, I get 0 0.0125. Was that, was that a good assumption that we neglected it compared to 0 0.392? Well, take that, divide by 0 0.392 times 100 to get 3.19%. Yep, that's less than 5%. That was a good assumption. We'll go with it. Also, now remember we said that we were assuming that we could neglect the hydrogen ion concentration due to the auto dissociation of water. <coughs> well, yeah, 
this is a really good assumption because 0 0.0125 is a lot bigger than 1 times 10 to the minus 7th. So that would not have affected our answer. But you should always check that. There are times when you cannot neglect that hydrogen ion that's due to the audit dissociation of water. You'll see this in the homework problems. So we found X, which is, in this situation, the concentration of hydrogen ion. So the pH is negative log of that. 1.902 is our pH. There's our answer. Now, percent ionization. We actually calculated the percent ionization when we did the 5% rule, but here's the definition. Percent ionization is equal to the concentration of hydrogen ion at equilibrium divided by the initial concentration of the acid times 100. And if you look at this graph, this shows percent ionization versus the original concentration of the acid. The less concentrated the acid is, the greater the percent ionization. If you think about that, that makes sense. If we start with a really dilute solution, then there's a lot of room in that solution for the acid to dissociate. And so, in general, as the initial concentration of acid approaches zero, the percent ionization increases. So let's go ahead and calculate the percent ionization for that problem we just did. So a 0.392 molar solution of nitrous acid, we just calculated what the equilibrium concentration of the hydrogen ion was, 0 0.0125, divided that by the initial concentration of the acid, the nitrous acid times 100, 3.19%, that's the percent ionization.